good player up here. Oh, that's good stuff. A Wiley Ballard graphic. Do you want me to start the stream? Start the stream. Camera three. Beautiful. Oh, we're coming in on one. For more information on how your school can join the Play on School broadcast program, go to playonsports.com slash SBP. Hello and welcome to the CIF San Francisco City Championship, the boys basketball championship on PlayOnSports.com. It's the PlayOnSports.com pregame show live from Keysar Pavilion in San Francisco, California. I'm Sonny Boparai here with Harold Mills on your destination for high school sports, PlayOnSports.com. Tonight's matchup features the technically visiting Mission Bears with coming into tonight's championship game with a league record of 11-1, and one, uh, taking on... The Lincoln Mustangs also with an identical record of 11-1 and one in league play. Tonight they will face off for the CIF San Francisco Boys Basketball Championship. Harold, these two teams uh, met once this season. Can you, can you give us a rundown on how that kind of went? Well, earlier, in the, earlier in the year, at the beginning of this year, January 9th to be exact, uh, these two teams met and this was that game was Mission's only loss, which gave them the 11-1 record, and they lost that game to Lincoln 69-55. Uh, in that game, a few highlights for Mission though, as their uh, one of their stars, Kevin Murray, scored 23 points that game. Lincoln played tough defense last game, and as Mission was trying to do a comeback, Lincoln just stayed on with the defense. A lot of rebounds Lincoln had, a lot of offensive boards they got, which got them the game uh, last time they came across each other. A lot of great insight there from Harold. He'll be our color guy tonight. I'm Sonny Bobri with PlayOnSports.com. Once again, this is coverage of the CIF San Francisco Boys Basketball Championship from Keysar Pavilion. And uh, these two teams, like you said, they met earlier this season. Lincoln come out, comes out with the win. Mission's only league loss in the season. Uh, these two teams very identical the way they play. One advantage that the Mustangs have here is size on the court, height on the court. They, by, they have the tallest man on the court by far, Seth Snooty, the starting center, the 6'7 junior for the Lincoln Mustangs. What, what can the Bears do to slow him down, keeping him off the glass tonight? Well, he was a big reason for their loss to him last time they played on January the 9th. The biggest thing they need to do tonight is to keep Seth Snooty out of the paint. Keep him outside, outside of the key or outside of the lower key. And, but don't let him get into the middle because once he's on the inside and they pass with the ball, he's, he's automatic on the inside. And, as, and rebound, you have to keep him out or he'll grab every offensive rebound. All right, so both of these teams pumped up for this championship game here in San Francisco tonight. Uh, one of the things they'll have to keep in their minds is, you know, they're playing for a championship game. These teams, 
not necessarily, they didn't play a whole lot of big games this season because they were so far ahead of everybody else in their league that they, they were winners. Uh, I want to take a look at how both of these teams got here. The bracket, uh, the Boys Varsity Basketball Championship bracket uh, mission. In the first round, they took on Washington, defeated them. In the second round, they took on Galileo, who had a bye in the first round. They defeated them, and that's how they find themselves in this game. Uh, Lincoln finished number two in the league with that 11-1 record. For the uh, Lincoln Mustangs, they took on Balboa in the first round, defeated them, went on to defeat Marshall in the second round, and that's how they find themselves here. Lincoln uh, came in with the second seed. Uh, I think I screwed that up. Mission came in with the fourth seed uh, with a 9-3 and three record. That's, that's uh, my apologies. Mission, Mission Bears had a 9-3 and three record this season, and the Lincoln Mustangs 11-1. and one. Lincoln Mustangs the number two seed going into the playoffs, and that's how they find themselves here. Lincoln and Mission for the San Francisco CIF Championship tonight. And that's going to do it for tonight's PlayOnSports.com pregame show. We'll be back with the starting lineup in just a few minutes. Thank you for turning into the CIF San Francisco City Boys Basketball Championship game. That's starting next here on your destination for high school sports, playonsports.com. And welcome back to PlayOnSports.com, our coverage of the CIF San Francisco Boys Basketball Championship live here from Keysar Pavilion in San Francisco. It's time for our starting lineups for the Mission Bears. Number three, Kevin Murray. He is the 5'10 senior guard. Number four, Antoine Porter, the 5'9 senior guard. Number 11, Joji Kuratani, the 5'6 sophomore guard. Number 24, Anthony Bonds, the 6'1 senior guard. And the tallest man on the uh, starting lineup for the Mission Bears will be number 32, Isaac Strasnikis, the 6'2 junior forward for the Mission Bears. For the Lincoln Mustangs, starting lineup is going to be number 3, Demetrius Williams, the 5'9 senior guard. Number 5, James Gurr, the 6'0 senior guard. Number 12, Mitchell Lee, the 5'10 senior guard. Number 22, Davion Telfor, the 6'2 junior forward. And the tallest man on the court tonight will be number 33, Seth Snotty, the center, the six foot seven junior center for the Lincoln Mustangs, who are the favorites coming into tonight's matchup. So as you can see, the teams getting ready for the matchup. They're on the court now. We're ready to we're ready for tip-off. Once again, I'm Sonny Bober here with Harold Mills for PlayOnSports.com. Harold, right before tip-off, what is your biggest key to the game for each team? Well, the biggest key to the game for Lincoln has to be Seth Snoot. If he can get inside and get the offensive boards, the defensive boards, get some block shots, stop anybody from driving into the key, I think they'll hold this game, they'll, they'll hold this lead down as they did last game. As for mission, they have to hit their outside shots. If they're not going to be able to get on the inside, they have to hit their outside shots so they can take this game. All right, so we're ready for tip-off. Seth Snotty, the six foot seven junior center, there for the tip-off, along with Anthony Bonds, the six-foot-one senior guard, and Snotty will win the tip-off. Although he tips it right to Joji Kuratani, who makes the dish and the finish 
for the Bears. That's number 24, Anthony Bonds, with the finish. And that's how this game will start off. Mission in, and here comes the ball. <laughs> right at our right at our table here. Luckily, everybody's okay. You okay, Harold? I'm good. That, all was, right. good. that was good. Close call. All of our equipment is here. No spilled water. We're all good. <laughs> but good good uh, recognition by Anthony Bonds on that put back there as the game has started. An exciting start to this game for everybody involved as the Mission Bears have an early 2-0 lead. And there's the shot from the free throw line is... Kevin Murray, and he misses, but he does get the rebound. Now they go to the top. That's from the top of the key. Antoine Porter, the three-point shot, missed, and the rebound goes to Davion Telfer. He passes into Kuratani, and the layup attempt by Williams is missed. Rebound and going the other way. Very fast pace here for the teams early on. And you're going to see that here in the beginning of this championship game. They're drilling and rushing right now, but after a while, they'll calm down. This game will start to slow down, and it'll be another basketball game. Driving and dishing is Murray, and the ball squirts out. There's a fight for it, and they're going to say that looks like Snotty was holding the ball and stepped out of bounds. Possession will stay with the Bears. We look for this game to be very physical, very intense. Uh, these two teams are like going at each other, and especially for Mission, they want to try to get some redemption from earlier this year. Murray dribbles around the arc, trying to find a way in. Dishes there for Bonds, who gets it back. To Kuratani. Kuratani drives with the layup attempt. Off glass misses. And the rebound, is, Kuratani recovers his own miss there. Mission is on top of the ball right now. Grabbing every board they get. And that's the key to the game is all your offensive boards. Amazing moves by Antoine Porter to get to the rim, but he could not finish. Now going the other way with the finish is Demetrius Williams for the Mustangs. And now they are on the board. And now driving fast down the other side, Kuratani grabs the cross-court pass. That was great concentration by Demetrius Williams. Kept his eye on the basket and was able to get the layup in. He was down there with Antoine Porter, who was defending him, and he just got by him to finish on that play. So now we have a 2-2 tie, getting close to six minutes remaining here in the first quarter. Still early. Handling the ball is Curtani around the perimeter. Can't find a way in, and he is hounded by a duo of defenders for the Mustangs there. That was... Demetrius Williams and James Gurr all over him, and uh, they knocked the ball out of bounds. Intense defense from the Mustangs. Yeah, excellent defense there. Double teamed on the player there and by uh, Demetrius and James Gurr to get the, to get the ball out of him. Kevin Murray handling the ball. Shot clock running down. Drives through the hoop, gets one up, but it does not fall. The rebound there by Isaac Stresnikas. He cannot finish with the ball. Rolling our way again. Touched out of bounds by the Bears, and the Mustangs will take position uh, possession at half, half court. Nice offensive rebound there by Isaac Strasnickis, but he could not finish as he missed his layup attempt. Right, and it's just all about your concentration. He even tried to go up and under, but just couldn't get it in. Seth Snotty dishes inside there to Davion Telfor, who was just rejected. Eventually the ball finds its way to Snotty again, handling the ball. He's hounded. He shoots, and his does not fall either. The ball knocked out of bounds by the Mustangs. Possession goes to the Mission Bears. Snotty was able to turn around and get a good jump shot there. The ball just didn't go in, but that was a great attempt at the basket. So nearing the five-and-a-half-minute mark here in the first quarter, neither team really uh, shooting well from the field right now, but a lot of that has to do with the great defense being played on both ends early on. There's the shot for Murray, and it drops. A beautiful drop-back shot for Kevin Murray, and he gives his team a two-point lead. And on the other end of the court, that was Mitchell Lee finishing with a nice cross-court pass. And here's another cross-court pass to Kurt Tommy, who catches the pass, and he is blocked. Snotty says, get that out of here. And there's a foul there. Looks like they're going to call that one on Antoine Porter. will now shoot two from the free throw line. These are the first free throw attempts of the game for anybody. Demetrius Williams will get the first shot. And 
at it right now. Uh, really, really, really high paced game, but they are going to have to slow down. <laughs> the perimeter is James Gurr looking for some space he'll throw it off to Kip hasn't been hitting anything. Harold, uh, what was the biggest court press and that really changed the momentum of the game. I'm here in the second half a little bit. Yeah, probably starting at the top of the key and then Let's see if they try to do things a little differently here in the second half. Starting off the second half for the Mustangs, there goes da Davion Telfer. the front rim. Did a little fake there, act like he's going to pass out to the outside, turned around immediately and put the shot up and was able to get the points for his squad. Now the Bears defense backs off just a little bit but still pressuring from that side of the court. The dish to Snotty in the paint and he is able to finish there. To the ground is Kevin Murray as the ball goes out of bounds. Knocked out of bounds there 
by Seth Snotty, it looks like, and so possession will remain with the Bears. No, they're gonna call a foul. A foul on number 22, Davion Telfer. A push foul there. That's the first team foul of this second half. Here's a shot from just inside the three-point line, hits glass. Murray had nobody there, and he goes down. The outlet pass. Tie game at 30 after a great individual effort there by Demetrius Williams. Yeah, just never gave him the play, slowed down, got the ball in, it was able to get the hoop and the hard, and as he shoots a free throw here. Very nice. A chance to put his team back on top here in the second half. And he completes the three-point play. Demetrius Williams with his 10th point of the game so far. Now it looks like there's some confusion here between the referees and the coaches. A delay of game warning issued to the Mission Bears. Not quite sure how that happened, but that was the call on the court. And now you can see both teams really pumped up a very close Pass in the paint, and that's how that sequence ended there. Now dribbling the perimeter, driving the lane. They're going to call travel before that shot was taken out. That was Davion Telfer with the travel, and that's a turnover for in favor of the Bears. Took a couple extra steps there. Yeah, that's no big deal, just a couple <laughs> extra steps. Now handling the ball for the Bears. And Mitchell Lee, they will call the foul, and I saw him get his hand in there. Uh, referee actually calls that one on number three, Demetrius Williams, for the hold. Now 5.46 remaining here in the third quarter. An over-the-top pass. Nice catch there made by Bonds. Gets the ball to Porter. A deep three-point shot off back rim. Back iron, and the ball knocked out of bounds off of Snotty, and he is beside himself with that call. Porter there was way behind the marker there on that D3. Oh, yeah, that was an <laughs> NBA three-pointer there, and even that was a long NBA three-pointer. The inbound pass is tipped by Snotty, going down the other way is Mitchell Lee. Mitchell tries to finish, and he is fouled on the play. The foul is going to be called there against Anthony Bonds. Great way by Mitchell Lee to keep going on the play, try to make the three-point play, and was able to draw the foul. So he'll take two shots, his team down by one, early here in the second half. Correct me if I'm wrong, I believe this is the first time Mitchell Lee has been at the free throw line tonight. You are correct, this is his first free throw, free throw attempt, and he makes his first one. He hits the first one very smooth on that one, nothing but net, and we have a tie game now, 32 all. Lee's second attempt rims in, giving his team the one-point lead. Now we, we see the lack of the full-court defense there for the Mustangs, which is something we saw early in the first half, so it's not there anymore. Gives the Bears a lot of, a lot of room to work with, and that was Anthony Bonds finishing after a nice dish from his teammate Antoine Porter to give his team the one-point lead back. Antoine Porter taking over his leadership role here in the second half as he started to do it at the end of the first half. Gurr with a nice pass over there to Davion Telfer, who travels once he catches the ball. That's a bad turnover against the Mustangs. And, and again, we see that lack of that full court defense, which we saw early in the first half, and it was working really well for the Mustangs. <coughs> Excuse me. And now it's not there anymore, but there's a nice defensive play as they tip the pass and steal it. Well, they Gurr. 
they, they tire it out, and now they have to kind of back up and kind of set back and look at things a little bit. Gurr dribbling around the perimeter. The ball moving around the perimeter now. Gurr gets it back in the corner, gives it into Snotty. He's just surrounded by gold jerseys and a really weird attempt there by Mitchell Lee over his back. No look and missed everything. He cannot afford to do that. That was just a straight giveaway there by Lee. Rebounded by Antoine Porter. And now the Bears will set up. Murray driving the lane, dishes out to the three-point line. That's Jarrell Stansel. His shot is blocked. Snotty with the rebound, dishes, uh, gives it up to Lee, who will come up the court. And now no full-court defense from the Bears. Handling the ball is Telfer. He'll spot up for a three-point shot from the top of the arc, and he misses everything. And that, not quite sure what happened there, but he just missed everything on that three-point attempt. He, he had some space, took the shot. No luck. What's that for? He has, to, he has to make those. When you're wide open like that, you have to take your time, concentrate. You're not going to make them all, but you have to get closer than that. And it looked like it was a good rhythm shot. He was able to step into it, but still uh, missed everything on that one. So the Bears take over possession again. Moving the ball around the perimeter, down on the floor goes Murillo. Handling the ball, driving the baseline is Stansel, who cannot finish. Rebound by Murray. He'll back up and set up once again. Gets the ball out to Porter, who will uh, allow his offense to set up, trying to calm his team down, saying, come on, guys, we got this. Slow it, slow it down a little bit, run the clock. His team working with a one-point lead here, three and a half minutes in the third quarter. Murray gets it back to Porter. Porter to Stancil. Stancil, a three-point shot off the front of the rim. Rebound by Murray, gets it into Porter. No, excuse me, that was uh, Pope who's able to finish for two points, giving his team the three-point lead. I tell you what, the Mission Bears have, playing, have been playing a lot different game this game than they did earlier in the year when they met up with Lincoln. Now Lee avoids giving up the ball and the steal dishes to Snotty, who's able to finish, and the foul. The foul will be called against Kerry and Pope, and that's exactly what the Mustangs needed. Exactly what they needed, get into the big, get into the big man in the key. He was able to get deep in under the rim, and once he's there, it's, it's, it's just automatic from there. They call that foul against Kerry and Pope, so the bucket does count. Snotty will shoot a free throw attempt to try to tie this game up with just under three minutes remaining here in the third quarter. A very tough defensive game being played by both teams tonight. Yeah, there's a lot of, a lot of intensity, of very aggressive on both ends. Uh, bodies are on the floor, and they're putting everything on the line for this championship tonight. Snotty hits his free throw, making, uh, completing the three-point play there and tying this game at 36. Now they start to play some sort of a full court defense once again. But backing off just a little bit. Working the ball up the court is Porter. Porter gets it into Murray. Murray dishes to, uh, to Pope who cannot finish. No foul called until that one is called right there. It looks like they're going to call it on the shot attempt. Foul against Mitchell Lee and it was in the act of the shot. So two shots from the free throw line for Ronald Murillo. And the play before that, Davion Telford with a great block there, all ball there. Just couldn't get the defensive boards. You have to grab those defensive boards when they have to go like that. Yeah, it's been a big part of this game. It looks like the Bears are having a lot of second chance opportunities, and it's and it's tough to see why when you have a guy like Seth Snotty with his size in there, why he's giving up these second chance opportunities to the Bears. And there's another second chance opportunity, and it is finished. The offensive rebound on the missed free throw by Karrion Pope turns uh, turns a missed free throw into two points. So Karrion Pope has been, has been playing his heart out this game. He stepped up big time defensively and offensively for his team. Mitchell Lee trying to draw the foul, does not get it, misses the shot. The rebound there by Karrion Pope, and now the ball coming back down the other way. Bears working with a three-point lead. There's Porter trying to make a move in the lane. Dishes to Pope, who cannot finish the ball. Squirts out, recovered there by Demetrius Williams. Now trying to go hard the other way. Dishes down the feet, down the court for a driving Davion Telfer, who was called for the treble. Either that or the ball was knocked out of bounds. Either way, possession goes to the Bears. Well, I thought they would call it a travel because it surely looked like he did it travel sure, there. It sure did look like a travel. <laughs> but they did not call it. Instead, the ball goes out of bounds, and they call it out against the Mustangs. Uh, another bad turnover there for Lincoln. And they're going to call that foul against Mitchell Lee. And it looks like the Mustangs are starting to fall apart a little bit here. Yeah, Kevin Murray uh, blew by Mitchell Lee there. He tried to get his hand out, grabbed him, and they called him. 
And this could be a situation of the Mustangs just losing their legs a little bit, trying to struggle to hang with the Bears now. And as a result, committing fouls, grabbing on to players, pushing players, trying to keep up with them. And that's what it looks like to me out there. Less than two minutes remaining here in the third quarter. A three-point lead for the Mission Bears in their gold jerseys against the Lincoln Mustangs in the white here. There's Murray working, trying to get the shot off, but he is fouled there by Demetrius Williams. He will take two shots. Demetrius Williams trying to reach in there, grab the ball. Just had held onto his arm just a tad bit, and it cost him. Yeah, actually, they did not call that on Demetrius Williams. Instead, they called that one on number 21, Randy Henson. To me, it definitely looked like Williams was the one who, who grabbed a hold of Murray as he was trying to drive towards the basket, but that was not the case. So Murray will shoot two. His first one is up and in. And the Bears have reached the 40-point mark now. Murray's been good from the free throw line tonight. And he is good once again, hitting both of those free throws. He'll be subbed out for now by Keith Boosie. Boosie will check in again once again. 41-36, the lead for the Mission Bears with 1.45 remaining here in the third quarter. We see that full court defense again, very intense. Very dangerous there, pass near the half court line, but they do manage to keep it on their side of the half court. Working around the perimeter, now there's a bear on the ground. That's Antoine Porter, he gets up very slowly, but he does get up and try to work his way back down. And there's a nice move to the glass, but it goes wide. There's Snotty on the rebound, he can't finish. And there's a finish by Davion Telfor and the foul. And the coach, the mission coach, uh, looks like he threw a water bottle into the ground, tossing the cap into the, into the, uh, onto the court, and now there's water all over the mission sideline. Doesn't look like the referees saw that, so they're not gonna call anything, but uh, he definitely lost his composure there for a moment. Well, it's an intense game. There's games like this, you, uh, emotions do get into the game. Davion Telfer unable to complete the three-point play. It looks like they're gonna call a lane violation against the, the Mustangs anyway. And now the referee will stop because the water from the, the water bottle spike from Coach Arnold Zelaya has uh, spilled out onto the court. So the referee is calling for some toweling over there. I didn't see exactly what happened, but it definitely looked to me like head coach Arnold Zelaya for the Mission Bears threw down a water bottle in frustration when, that, uh, when the bucket and the foul was called on the Davion Telfer bucket there just moments ago. And uh, that water definitely squirted out onto the court. Now they're spending some time to clean it up. End result, the Bears will take possession from uh, underneath the opposing hoop with 1.22 remaining here in the third quarter, a 41 to 38 lead for the Bears. And now we see all <laughs> the players doing somewhat of a dance where the water spill was to try and dry up that area. Well, you gotta get it dry. It's for the player's safety. Um, that's how ACLs and stuff get torn out, yeah. slipping on the court like that. So you gotta make sure that floor is dry. Doing everything they can. This is causing a little bit of a delay in the action here, but whatever you gotta do to make sure that the playing service is safe for the players on the court, as well as the referees. They're running around out there too. They don't want to slip and fall. Exactly. And now the referee is discussing something here. It's gonna hold up the game just a little bit longer. Head referee coming over. So you, you may have been able to hear the referee having a discussion with the coach there. They call an official delay of game against Mission because of the spill, because of the spiked water bottle, which caused a delay in the game. And uh, another one will be a penalty against the Bears. There's an, a mishandle on the inbounding of the pass. It's knocked out uh, by the Bears. Possession goes back to the Mustangs. Good hard defense on that side of the court. James Gurr there, standing on his man there, wrestling for the ball there, was able to uh, get the ball back for his team. And that inbound pass is tipped and recovered. A nice recovery by, by Telfer. He cannot finish, but there's Snotty to clean it up. 
Davion Telfer with the steal, missed the layup, but right behind him was Seth Snotty to put those points on the board. Well, Davion Telfer defensively has been playing himself a good game, and luckily Snotty was able to come in there for the cleanup and for some very important points for the League of Mustangs. And on the other, other end of the court, Keith Boosie with a shot from the free throw line, and he was fouled there by number, tw uh, number 12, Mitchell, excuse me, number 21, Randy Hinson. And as a result, he will shoot two from the line. 108 left here in the third quarter, a 41 to 40 score, the Mission Bears leading by one. Bussy misses his first, uh, Bussy misses his first free throw attempt. So when it really seemed like Mission was starting to gain momentum, a couple of things kind of stalls that. Maybe it was the delay of the game and the water, ball, water bottle toss. Uh, maybe the turnover on the other end. But it looks like the Mustangs are trying to work their way back into this one and take control of this game again. Boosie hits his second free throw. And as the Mustangs move the ball down the other side of the court, tough defense from the Bears. And the Mustangs having a hard time handling the ball. There's Gurr. Gurr off the glass, misses hard. Recovery there by Williams. Williams gets it back to Gurr around the perimeter. Now the Mustangs will slow things down. Telfer handling the ball at the top of the arc. He's going to move to his right. Good defense there by Kurt Tommy. Handling Telfer very well. Telfer now back to the top of the arc. There's Williams with an air ball. Demetrius Williams wide open. Nobody near him from the top of the arc for three. And that's the second air ball we've seen from the Mustangs yeah. here in the second half yeah. from that almost that same place. And I think it's from the same person also. And <laughs> they just have to capitalize. The inbound pass goes to Snotty. And after a couple of fancy moves, he's able to finish. 42 to 42 is the score now as we go down to under 20 seconds here in the third quarter. A tie game. Snotty, they need him to continue to do that. A nice drive to the hoop there, but another air ball from Antoine Porter. And now... The, the Mustangs have numbers going the other way. There's Gurr. He's fouled going up for the shot, and it is no good. And Porter but, is still on the ground on the other side of the court. It looks like a he's grabbing his lower back there. Porter in pain underneath his own hoop and getting up very slowly to his feet, holding his back. I saw the way he landed when he went up for the layup on the missed attempt. And he landed right on his lower back. A pretty hard fall there. Hopefully he'll be okay for the rest of the game. Yeah, it looks like he's gonna looks like he's gonna try and keep himself in the game. He will keep himself in the game. He's not gonna allow just a little spill like that to take him out. Although he is holding his back, he does seem to be in some pain. On the other end of the court, however, we saw James Gurr going up for a shot. He was fouled and he missed the shot, but he will get two free throws here with 7.4 seconds remaining in the third quarter. A 42-42 tie. Gurr misses the first free throw, and that one hurts. You needed that one. And these free throws are going to become more and more important as we get to the end of this game because so far as it looks like it's going to be a nail-biter. So the things that make up for you know with close games are free throws, and they are important. <laughs> Essentially three points, and Gurr takes advantage of his second free throw attempt, hits it. Now six seconds, handling the ball, coming down the court. Is Port, excuse me, is uh, Porter. Yeah, Porter takes the shot and misses, and that is the end of the third quarter. No fouls called. That's how the third quarter will end. 43 to 42. The Lincoln Mustangs leading the Mission Bears by one point in what has turned out to be an amazing basketball game here tonight. We are in for a treat here in the fourth quarter, I tell you. Um, both these teams, this game at this point, last game, was already kind of won by Lincoln. And now you have such a close game this time around that Mission wants to try to make this outcome different than the last, and Lincoln wants to try to continue to uh, sweep the series. Now we saw Antoine Porter, the 5'10 senior guard, excuse me, the 5'9 senior guard for the Mission Bears, holding his back after that, uh, that tough-looking spill he had underneath his own hoop uh, and then got up and played out the rest of that quarter. We'll see if that if that hinders him here in the fourth quarter because it did look like he was in some pain even as he drove down to finish off that third quarter, but uh, we'll see if that slows him down because he's been a big part of this Mission Bears rally so far to this point. Very big part, and he's a, he's one of those leaders. He's a senior, and he knows if he can play this game, he's going to play this game. They need him to come through for his squad. And he is back out on the court to start this fourth quarter. Eight minutes left to decide the CIF San Francisco Boys Basketball Championship. 
The Lincoln Mustangs taking in a 43-42 lead to start off this fourth quarter. Bears with possession. Handling the ball at the top of the court is Antoine Porter. There's a steal. Randy Hinson with the steal dishes to Gurr. Gurr is blocked. That ball is knocked out of there by Anthony Bonds. And then the steal by Anthony po Antoine Porter. So a very exciting sequence of events to start off in this fourth quarter. Anthony Bonds with his third block of the game. And as I said earlier, he is putting on his own block party here tonight. Once again, I'm Sonny Bope right here with Harold Mills. As you see Murray get trapped there, he's able to get rid of the ball, though. Murray handling the ball at the top of the court. Almost 10 seconds remaining on the shot clock. Drives and fires, but misses the rim completely. And now there's a jump ball called as fighting for the ball was number 10, Tyree Marzetta. And it looks like Karrion Pope of the Bears was in on that as well. Possession arrow goes to the Mustangs. We're starting to get into the nitty gritty of the game. There's gonna be a lot of grinding here in this fourth quarter. Yeah, watch out for these players to get a little nippy with each other now as the championship is on the line. And now it looks like there's some more issues uh, with some well, in that situation, it's probably just some sweat. Sweat some, on the ground. Some sweat on the ground, a little bit of slippery spot over there. We're going to clean that up and towel that off. Yeah, these courts, uh, any kind of moisture on the courts, they get uh, slick very easy. Yeah. And that's why in professional leagues and the higher college ranks, you always see the towel people out there after every possession. they always out there wiping the floor. you got to keep the floor dry. Absolutely. It's a big part of the game. It can cause some injuries, and nobody wants to see that at any level of the game. So the Mustangs will take over now with a one-point lead, nearing seven minutes remaining in this game. We see the full court pressure here brought by the Bears. Gurr trying to work the ball across half court. He does. And they call a foul against the Bears. Looks like a blocking foul. That's going to be against Antoine Porter. And he stood right in front of him. Um, you can stand in front of the player, but you have to kind of give him the leeway. You want to block him. You try to plant your feet there. He can draw the foul in on you. Each team now with six team fouls at this point in the game. It's going to be a crucial part of this game. Like you said, free throws. There's the steal. Looks like Joji Kuratani got his hand on that ball, knocked it away. He was able to call timeout before they called the jump ball. So the Mustangs hang on to possession there. A very important possession here early in the fourth quarter, but still very, uh, very vital moment of the game. Do you want to watch more of your school's great matchups like the game you are enjoying here tonight? Tell your school to sign up for the Play On Sports School broadcast program. The program allows schools to broadcast all their games and other activities on the web. For more information, go to playonsports.com slash SVP. Thank you for tuning in to tonight's CIF San Francisco Boys Basketball Championship game between the Lincoln Mustangs and the Mission Bears. I'm Sonny Bope right here with Harold Mills, our producer Todd Allen, and our videographer Tim Fitzgerald tonight from Kizar Pavilion in San Francisco, where we've got a good one on our hands right now. Seven, just under seven minutes remaining. The Mustangs with a one-point lead and possession. Losing possession there. Out of bounds. Possession goes to the Bears, and very upset about it is Davion Telfer throwing his fists in the air, feeling like he was pushed out of bounds. Working the ball down very quickly now. Kevin Murray dishes to a wide open Porter who cannot finish the three point shot but the offensive rebound there by Pope and he is fouled as he banks that one on off the glass. Yeah, carry on Pope again coming up big for his team. He's been doing it all night. Great grabbing all the boards for his team tonight. Carry on Pope with the finish and the foul. And, as for, and for Antoine Porter, uh, he misses another wide open uh, three-point shot. He has to try to knock some of those down. He had a few good looks today and just haven't been able to get them in. Pope not able to complete the three-point play. Rebounded there by Davion Telfer. Mustangs trying to work the ball down the court now. Being handled by Demetrius Williams. He dribbles down to the arc. Hands it off there to Telfer. Telfer down the near sideline. Ball gets back to Williams at the top of the arc. He's going to work down the near sideline. Gets it back to Telfer. Telfer at the top of the arc now. Looks like the Mustangs are having a hard time penetrating into the, into the lane here. Williams now with a pass to the corner. Hinson down to 
One second, they get the shot off, and it does hit rim. And the offensive rebound there by Henson, who's able to finish. Great job there by Henson there to keep his eye on the ball. Stay alert. When he has a steal right now as he's going down the court. And Henson dishes to Williams, who cannot finish, but the rebound and the finish by Davion Telford, driving right behind his guys, able to clean up that mess. And on the other end of the court, another big play, <laughs> Anthony Bonds. Got to love championship basketball. This is what we love to see right here. This is good stuff here as Demetrius Williams now working the ball down the court for the Mustangs, and now they're going to slow it down as those last 30 seconds got really <laughs> intense. I'm, lo I'm losing my voice already. Uh, this is what Telford to see. loses the ball. It's still there by Anthony Bonds. Now Antoine Porter down the baseline, up and misses his shot. Rebounded there by Snotty. Seth Snotty. And uh, now you can feel the crowd is into this one. It's very warm. The air is very thick in here. The crowd is on their feet. Five minutes remaining in this championship game. A one-point lead for the Mustangs. 47-46. They move the ball into Snotty. Snotty is fouled. No! Jump ball as he was going up with it. And, and now, the now, I believe that was Anthony Bonds there on the defense there. Playing great defense on Snotty as he's been doing all night. And the combination of Anthony Bonds and Karrion Pope on top of Seth Snotty has been the difference in this game for the Bears tonight. And yeah. right there it cost the Mustangs a possession. Exactly, and that's what we were talking about earlier is getting Snotty, putting the defense on him and keeping him out of that, keeping him out from under that rim. And they have been successful at doing that. So the possession arrow on the jump ball gives possession to the Bears. Four minutes and 50 seconds remaining in this game. The Bears are down by one. This is the CIF San Francisco Boys Basketball Championship game. Murray handling the ball. Defended there by Hinson. Hinson goes to the ground. Ball squirts out to, to Stancil. Stancil gets it to Murray. And the three-point shot there by Porter misses off the rim. Porter with another missed shot. And the rebound by Marzetta. And the foul. They're going to call this one against Jarrell Stancil. Yeah, they're going to get Stancil here for the push. Yeah, uh, Porter with the with a missed three-point shot there. He hasn't he hasn't had great success from the three-point shot tonight. And uh, now because we are in the foul, a one and one attempts for the rest of the game, or at least until we get into double-digit fouls. Seven fouls for each team, and at the line is Tyree Marzetta for the Mustangs. He misses the first of his one and one. Ball squirts out. Now it's Porter working down the other side. Loses the ball, but able to get it back. Now there's a a scrum on the floor, and they're going to give possession to the Mustangs. They're going to call a foul on Antoine Porter, and he is on the ground. I don't know if he's in pain or if he's just upset about that call. Gets up slowly. It looks like he was just upset about what happened there. He lost the ball, and he's upset about it. Well, that was a great way to scrap for the ball by Demetrius Williams. That is how you fight to keep your to keep your team in this game and to try to come away with the W. That is the eighth team foul against the Bears. So at the line for a one and one is now Demetrius Williams for the Mustangs. These are now crucial, crucial shots. Mustangs with a one point lead, four minutes and 19 seconds remaining in this CIF San Francisco boys basketball championship game. Williams hits the first one, he'll get another one giving his team a two-point lead now. Williams, a chance to put his team up by three. And he misses. Rebounded there by R Ronald Murillo. Gets the ball out to Murray. Murray dishes to Kuratami. And he misses the three-point shot. Rebound is knocked out of bounds against the Mustangs. Possession goes to the Bears. Another missed three-point shot there. That one by Kuratani. Yeah, and they're trying to put these three-pointers in, and they have missed a lot from, from outside the arc. And this is another reason why uh, Lincoln has been able to stay in this game with him. And at this point of the game, you got to think that a three-point shot from either team is a huge momentum boost. I feel like this, this arena is ready to blow. <laughs> And that would do it for either team right now with as close as this game is. They're going to call the push foul there against Demetrius Williams as he shoved 
Kuratami out of bounds. That is the eighth team foul against the Mustangs, so Kuratani will go to the line and shoot a one and one. Getting close to being in the foul now completely are both teams. Two point lead for the Mustangs, a chance to tie it up here for Kuratani. He hits the first free throw. 48-47 now, and he will in fact get that chance to tie it up. Substitutions being made on both sides. Kuratani misses the second one. It's a one-point lead for the Mustangs. And we'll see how that right there affects the, affects the rest of the game. Mitchell Lee moving the ball down court now, down the near sideline. Gives it up to Telfon. Telfer with the ball now to Gurr. Gurr driving the lane, dishes out to Lee, who, dr who drives in, takes a shot off of the rim, and offensive rebound there by Demetrius Williams, who's able to finish. Demetrius Williams with a great way to stay under the rim there and fight for the ball. And a three-point shot from Kevin Murray, just ran up at the top of the arc and let it go, and it dropped in to tie this game at 50, and that's the three-point shot that this crowd has been waiting for. Oh, we knew somebody had to hit Kevin Murray. One of their star players was the one to come up for them big, and the fans did erupt, and this game is at 50-50 to 50 right now with three minutes and 26 seconds left. And it looks like that timeout was called right after that three-point shot by the Mission Bears. Each team now with three timeouts remaining, and that was huge. I think Kevin Murray knew that's, that he needed to do something for his team to get them back into it. It, it started to feel like they were starting to fall out of it a little bit, he walked up without hesitation, took that three-point shot from the top of the arc, and it went in for him. It wasn't pretty. It, it didn't <laughs> fall right through the hoop or anything, but bounced off the rim, off the glass, and in, and it counts. Well, that's how you have to do it. If you see an opportunity open, you have to take it. You cannot hesitate, and that's exactly what he did. He came down the court, pulled up for it, and, and threw it up there, and, he, and went in for him. Three minutes and 26 seconds remaining in this game. A 50-50 tie in this championship basketball game between the Mustangs and the Bears, the Mission Bears and the Lincoln Mustangs, I should say. Both teams have to watch their mistakes here in the last three minutes of this game. Both teams with eight fouls, so any fouls from here are one-on-ones until they get to ten fouls, in which case each team will be shooting two free throws. Mitchell Lee handling the ball, tries to hand it off to Telfer. Telfer can't handle it, and the ball is stolen. And that's a half-court violation as on the ground was Anthony Bonds and tried to toss it back to the rushing Ronald Murillo, who was just on the other side of the half-court line. So an un unfortunate move there for the Bears as they had numbers going the other way. They have to watch, they have to watch the, how fast they move the ball. They have to keep the ball in possession. Yeah, I don't think Bonds really had a choice there. He was on the ground with the ball. He wanted to get rid of it to a teammate before he was piled on top of but uh, just not aware of where he was on the court that time. So now the Mustangs moving the ball around the perimeter. There's Telfer. Telfer drives in, takes the shot against a couple of defenders, doesn't hit anything, gets his own rebound, and fouled as he goes up, and he will take two shots. Great individual effort there by Davion Telfer. Davion Telfer, he's just been playing his heart out this game. He's been really aggressive, going after every, every board, going after every ball. And that is now the ninth foul against the Bears, they are one foul away from putting the Mustangs in the foul. Telfon will, uh, excuse me, Telfer will try to complete the three-point play here. Oh, I'm sorry, did he miss the shot? That's right, he missed the shot, so he will uh, shoot two here. He makes the first one. Giving his team a one-point lead now with 2.55 remaining in the game. Telfer, a chance to put his team up by two if he can hit both free throws. The second one is up and good. Mustangs now with a two-point lead over the Bears. Under three minutes remaining in the game. It is officially crunch time. If it wasn't before, <laughs> it is now. It is now come down to this. <laughs> Murray gets the ball out to Bonds. Bonds gets it back to Murray. Murray back to Bonds. Bonds in. To Murillo. Murillo with a shot, misses, gets his own rebound. Not his own rebound. That was uh, that was Karrion Pope getting down in there, but it looks like he possessed the ball out of bounds. 
That's a turnover. Ball goes to the Mustangs. Nice attempt there by Murillo to get in there and get a rebound for his team, but too much momentum took him out of bounds there. Now we see the full court defense once again. There's Mitchell Lee driving to the hoop. A bad shot, but he's fouled. Great way to draw the foul in there on his part. Mitchell Lee will take two shots, and that is the 10th team foul against the Bears. So they are officially in the foul. Now every foul will result in two free throws for the Mustangs. And they already have a two-point advantage. Two and a half minutes now in the game, and Mitchell Lee will take two free throws. Misses the first one. These are important. This is, uh, free throws can can make, uh, make or break you. And this is what can pull the game away in your favor. And if you don't make them, you'll keep the other team in and give them keep giving them the hope that they can come out on, on top of this game. And we've seen what the Bears can do with a little bit of hope. They came back from down eight earlier in this game to take a lead into halftime. Now they find themselves down by three with two and a half minutes remaining in the game. The Mustangs were the favorites coming into tonight. And the Bears just didn't like the idea of that, so they wanted to make a game out of it. And that they have done. Handling the ball right in front of us, Antoine Porter has played a big part in this game. Ball gets back to Porter again, drives the lane, dishes out to Murray, open for three, and he hits it! What a way to show up. That's the way big players show up. Great, great shot. Kevin Murray with his second three-pointer here in the fourth quarter ties the game at 53 once again under two minutes left in this game. Now driving is Telfer. He cannot finish. Rebounded there by Karrion Pope. Gets the ball out to Antoine Porter and now the Bears with a chance to take the lead. He'll take a deep three off back iron. I don't think that was called for. I think he could have took his time. Uh, probably just feeling himself a little too much. Probably could have tried to work something out there. The coach is not happy with that decision by Antoine Porter to take the shot, the three-point shot from about quarter court. That was that was near half court, if anything else. He's taken a few of those deep threes here today and has not came up and probably was just getting uh, felt a little excitement off of the shots that uh, Murray was making and thought he could get his own in there. Yeah, Murray's been on fire here in the fourth quarter. Maybe the better decision for Porter there would have been to dish the ball to Murray and maybe let him take another three-point shot somewhere because Murray is feeling it right now. Maybe Porter wanted to get some get in on some of that action himself. Either way, he missed the three-pointer. Possession goes to the Mustangs and a timeout called here by the Lincoln Mustangs. Tie game at 53. A one minute and 32 seconds remaining in this game. And I don't know if you can hear this on our mics, but the uh, but the Mission Bears head coach, Arnold Zelaya, yelling at his players, getting them pumped up for these last 90 seconds, telling them, this is it. This is the championship. You don't play for anything but this right here. These are these are your rivals. These are the Mustangs. You play to win this game. Exactly. It all, it, it all comes down to this. Everybody has to be on point. And I don't think he was happy with Antoine Porter's decision <laughs> to shoot that ball from well beyond the arc. Well, yeah, very, very uncalled for. The only way that could have gone well for Porter is if it had gone in, and then maybe we wouldn't hear the coach yelling, but that's it. that was not a smart play by Porter. So now the Mustangs with possession, working the ball around the perimeter. Mitchell Lee trying to find an outlet. He gets the ball, and a nice pass in the paint to Davion Telfer. That was Demetrius Williams from the corner, found Telfer wide open underneath the hoop and got it to him for an easy bucket right there. Mustangs now up by two. One minute remaining in this game. Murray drives, fakes the shot, takes the shot, and he hits it. Ties this game back up again. Clutch right there from Kevin Murray. Murray is taking over this game for his team. He is keeping them in this game. That ball is knocked out of bounds. Good defense there by Ronald Murillo trying to stay on top of Demetrius Williams. Knocked that ball out of bounds. 48.9 seconds remaining in this game. We are tied at 55. The crowd is into this one. If they weren't before, I don't know why they weren't. Everybody is on their feet. It is an exciting game here. 48 seconds left. Let's see what happens. The inbound goes to Mitchell Lee. Mitchell Lee drives down the middle. Nobody there, and he is rejected, but a foul. And that's what, what you want to do. You know you got two free throws every foul. Now get in there, draw the foul, 
and try to pull away this game with the free throws. They called the foul on 23, Ronald Murillo. But what a brave move by Mitchell Lee, taking that ball from half court, found a lane, drove into it, went up for the shot, and was fouled. He'll shoot two, a chance to put his team up once again. 44.3 seconds remaining in the game. The score is tied at 55. Now the crowd getting into it, trying to distract Mitchell Lee. And it works. He misses his first free throw. His teammates try to get in there and give him a little bit of support. Lee's second free throw is in. Giving his team a one point lead now. 40 seconds and ticking. The clock is, is running out on this game. And a steal there. Mitchell Lee gets it. Throws it back to Telfer. And the ball is eventually deflected back to Bonds. Bonds now working his way back. Telfer is on the ground. He's in pain. He cannot get up. And there's a hard foul by Gurr, and Telfer is on the ground, grabbing at his face. He is still on the ground. He's in pain. And on the other side of the court, you can see Antoine Porter. He's also in pain, getting up, clutching at his back once again. A hard foul there by James Gurr, and it is truly coming down to the end here. And this is the kind of stuff you're going to see here, and you got an intense championship game like this. There's going to be people on the ground, and... and, and, and uh, People are going to get hurt, but if they can fight through it, they have to fight through it. They call the flagrant foul on James Gurr there. So Porter, still clutching at his back in pain, will take, will take some shots here. His team down by one. 26.7 seconds left in this game. The shot clock is off for the rest of this game. This is big. The crowd making noise as Antoine Porter tries to tie this game up and he misses. It rimmed in and rimmed out. And you gotta think, if Porter's back is hurting him right now, that's really affecting his free throw shots. The crowd getting up again here. Antoine Porter trying to tie this game. And he does. Trying to put his finger up to his mouth there, telling the crowd, trying to know to hush it down. Now he got that shot in. <laughs> and the Mission Bears coaching staff calls a timeout. They have two remaining. And the intensity in this Kizar Pavilion right here in San Francisco tonight, it it's it's something I've never sensed before. This is amazing. Yeah, you can just feel it. and you know, The nervousness is even running through me, and I'm not even playing <laughs> in the game. But you love to see stuff like this. I'm so glad uh, that this is uh, the type of game that it is tonight, and this is the type of games that we just love to watch. Every player on the court tonight giving it everything they've got. We've seen players in pain. We've seen them on the ground clutching at their face, at their back. Hard fouls everywhere. Intensity. In any way you can imagine it, it's on this court here tonight for this CIF San Francisco Boys Basketball Championship game between the Lincoln Mustangs and the Mission Bears. We have a tie game, 56 all, 26.7 seconds left in the game. Do you smell overtime? <laughs> uh, possibly, possibly, but we'll see what happens. It's a great possibility it could happen. Possession will remain with the Bears because of the flagrant foul. Inbounding, it is... Antoine Porter, he'll throw it back. The catch is there by Anthony Bonds. He looks for Porter again. Porter now handles the ball near half court. He's defended by Demetrius Williams. Gets around him. The ball's knocked away from him, but he hangs onto it. Passes. A misguided pass. And a scramble for the ball. A mad scramble. Players on top of each other. Referee comes out and signals. Traveling. Traveling against the Mustang. Mustangs players thought that they had called the timeout with possession of the ball, but it really didn't look like anybody had possession at any point in there. Instead, the Mission Bears call timeout after they are awarded possession after the travel call against the Mustangs. Ten seconds remaining. That was almost like a fumble on did you see on the football field. <laughs> that ball was going everywhere. Oh, yeah, there was a scrum. Everybody's in there. You don't know where that ball's going after a while. One timeout remaining for the Bears. Two timeouts for the Mustangs. Well, Mission came into this game today knowing what they had to do to come out top 
and they've done it, I believe, playing uh, extra hard defense on Snotty, and I think that has been the difference in the game for them tonight. Yeah, Snotty hasn't had the usual success that he's had against other teams. The Bears have found a way to defend him and defend him well, and they've done it consistently all night long. Ten seconds left. Inbounding the ball are the Bears. Antoine Porter throws it back for Kevin Murray. They're going to take the last shot here. And it has it. Oh. Murray, the three-point shot off back iron. One second left. No time for the shot. And that is the end of the game. That's the end of regulation, I should say. No foul called there, but on the ground and in a large amount of pain is Mitchell Lee. Well, Murray tried to, he's been coming up big all night for his team in the fourth quarter, and, and they had the ball in the right person's hand. He put it up, it just didn't go in for him. Kind of shot it at, a, at a, a little far behind the R2. I think he could have maybe took his time, maybe got a little bit close to the basket, or maybe even tried to drive in for a game-winning score. He took that shot with about five seconds left on the clock. Uh, I, I, don't, I don't think that's what Coach Arnold Zelaya was asking for. But then again, the scoreboard, uh, as pointed out by our producer Todd Allen, the scoreboard on the mission side of the court is not operating. It's not operable. He couldn't see how much time was actually left on the clock. Exactly. So that's a disadvantage. And now we see Mitchell Lee, who was in pain and on the ground, getting up and being walked over to the sideline. Looks like his right knee was in some pain. And that explains why Murray put the shot up so so quick. I didn't notice that the scoreboard was out on that side, but Ni nice, now that explains it. Nice catch by our producer Todd Allen. So we will go to overtime. Four minutes of overtime, tied at 56. I don't know how any of these players have any <laughs> gas left in the tank. They have literally put everything out that I thought they could possibly have. Well, this is where your conditioning in the, in the summer comes in. You have, Now it's time to dig deep. Now it's time to get in and get in uh, – Get into what you got and to go that little extra mile to finish this game out. For the CIF San Francisco Boys Basketball Championship game, the Mission Bears and the Lincoln Mustangs going to overtime. I'm Sonny Boparai here with Harold Mills on your destination for high school sports, playonsports.com. The crowd on their feet. Chants, stomps, everything coming from this Riled up crowd here at Kizar Pavilion in San Francisco tonight. I'm very interested in seeing who on which team steps up for their team here in, the, in, the, in this first overtime period. In the fourth quarter for the Bears, it was Kevin Murray. No doubt. Who took, uh, who took that last shot just off back iron to, to end, the, end regulation. The tip off is won there by Snotty. Snotty gets it back to Demetrius Williams. He'll work his way up court down the near sideline. Dishes to the corner for Tef Telfer. Telfer brings it back to the top to Gurr. Gurr slips with the ball, gets it to Demetrius Williams, and now a foul. And that foul is going to be called on Anthony Bonds of the Bears. And they are once again in the foul, so shooting two will be Demetrius Williams, a chance to put his team up on top here early in overtime. And it looks like Gurr handling the ball simply slipped and lost the ball. Luckily, Demetrius Williams was there, ended up with the ball, and he was fouled by Anthony Bonds on the play. And now they'll bring out the towel because Gurr is saying, look, I slipped on something over there. Yeah, he, just, he, he fell on something, that's for sure. Because him and a couple other players hit the ground and hit it hard. <laughs> that's very similar to where we saw Mitchell Lee fall at the end of regulation as well. Maybe that has something to do with it, but uh, we'll never know for sure. Now we'll see Williams shoot two free throws here. A chance to put his team on top here in overtime. Misses his first opportunity. And this is like, like we've been saying all game long, free throws. Free throws matter. <laughs> Especially if, at this time, of the, this time of the game. Oh, yeah. Demetrius Williams needs to start hitting them right now. He hits the second one. His team is up by one now with 345 left in overtime. Bringing the ball down is Antoine Porter. We've seen him do a little bit of everything in this game. He's playing through pain right now. We've seen him clutch at his back. Drives the lane, spins, and a beautiful move to get it in the hoop. Uh, an amazing two points there for he's, Antoine Porter. He's been showing his ball and the skills and his feet all night, and right there you saw a perfect example of, of what he has. 
And now Gurr to the hoop and high off the glass. Kisses it in. Going back and forth now. The Mustangs a one-point lead. Getting close to three minutes remaining in overtime. There's Murray. He takes a shot off of the front of the rim. Rebounded there by Telfer and gets it to Gurr. Gurr down court looking for Mitchell Lee. Mitchell Lee back on the court. Finds Williams. Williams back to Snooty who finishes. And the Lincoln Mustangs starting to turn it on here in overtime. Snotty with the finish there for the Mustangs. And now Murray, a little Nearly desperation shot. shot there. Nice rebound there by Porter, and he's fouled as he goes up for the shot. Murray rushing the shot there a little bit, putting up. Um, I don't know if he's just throwing up shots, but he's not really thinking his shots out clearly. They call the foul there on Demetrius Williams. Now Antoine Porter will get a chance to bring his team back within one. 61 to 58, a three-point lead for the Mustangs over the Bears at this moment. We are in overtime, two minutes and 42 seconds remaining. You can see right there, James Gurr trying to get the crowd pumped up. I, uh, I was mistaken, I thought we saw Mitchell Lee out on the court earlier, number 12, here in overtime, but he is not. He is still on the bench in pain. Uh, that was number 21, Randy Hinson who was handling the ball on the Mustang side of the court there. So here comes the first free throw attempt for Antoine Porter, and he hits it. Brings his team to within two, with two minutes and 42 seconds remaining in overtime. And Antoine Porter, definitely a candidate for player of the game right now. Definitely. He hits his second free throw, hits them both. Brings his team to within one. Gurr inbounds it to Williams. Williams. Up to Henson. Henson across court to Telford. Telford gets it back to Henson. Henson, now they work the ball around the perimeter. Demetrius Williams with the ball. Works down the sideline towards the baseline. Back to the middle. Dishes for Snotty, who finishes. And there are now, Snotty is now here in overtime getting under that rim. And he is uh, doing damage. Yeah, the struggling Snotty so far in this game has shown up in overtime right now. He's getting open in that paint area, which is dangerous for the Bears. 63 to 60, lead for the Mustangs. Two minutes remaining in overtime now. Kevin Murray handling the ball. Around the perimeter, dishes to Porter. Porter faked the long three again, gets it back to Murray. Murray drives the baseline, had nowhere to go with that ball, just tipped it out to nobody, and it ends up in the hands of Demetrius Williams. And now the Mustangs a chance to make this a two possession game. Turnovers and mistakes will lose you the game. Gurr handling the ball, gets it back to Williams. Williams looking back to Gurr. Instead decides to drive and gives it to Telfer. Telfer back to Gurr. Now it just looks like the Mustangs are trying to burn as much time as they can. Williams gets it to, in the post, to Snotty who cannot finish. Rebounded there by Anthony Bonds. Bonds down court to Murray. Murray takes the shot and he's off back iron. Another bad miss there. And the ball knocked out of bounds by Snotty. Possession goes to the Bears. Luckily for the Bears, if they do get possession back there, Murray there with a great open look just couldn't knock it down. And Murray, who was so hot in the fourth quarter, has seemed to have gone cold here in overtime. One minute and 18 seconds remaining in the game. The Bears down by three with possession. This is championship basketball on PlayOnSports.com. Every definition, every definition of it. Murray handles the ball, goes it to Porter. Porter, a long three-point shot, and he hit it! Porter finally breaks that cold streak from the three-point land and ties this game up. Well, hey, De if you keep trying and trying and trying, you'll go down sometime. <laughs> Timeout called by the Mustangs. James Gurr passed up the opportunity to take a three-point shot, instead started a drive, and when his coach, uh, Matt Jackson, saw that, he called timeout. We have a tie game with a minute and three seconds remaining in overtime after a huge three-point shot by Antoine Porter. Play on Sports is on Facebook and Twitter giving you news and information and links to great highlights. Follow us at Play on Sports on both Facebook and Twitter. You can also access thousands of live and on-demand games on YouTube at youtube.com slash playonnetwork. Keep up with all the high school action every week from your destination for high school sports. Playonsports.com. And if we can guarantee the, view the viewers any more action like we've seen here tonight, 
Well, I'd say we're doing our job. <laughs> yeah, and, definitely. And the fans are getting the most out of it. This, this is an amazing basketball game here tonight. Well, this has been just a knit and grit game from the beginning. And Antoine Porter there coming up. I'm talking about coming up huge with a big three for his team to get them back in this game. Now the momentum is back in their favor. And they are playing on a high level right now. Antoine Porter, the senior, able to help his team out huge right there. We're close to 60 seconds left in overtime. Mustangs with the ball. They get it into Telfer. Telfer tried to dish it for Henson. It was knocked away. But Telfer gets it back and breaks it in. Great play by Telfer. Coming up big. He's been doing it all game. 50 seconds remaining. And the Bears lose the ball. Telfer ends up with it. He's got Williams down under the hoop. He shoots it. Bad miss. And the ball is recovered there by Bonds of the Bears. Now 39 seconds remaining in the game. Murray loses control of the ball. Porter loses control of the ball. Ball goes to Demetrius Williams, who calls time out. And now the Mustangs are feeling it. A two-point lead with 35 seconds left. Well, a little too much dribbling in between the legs for Antoine Porter there. And Demetrius Williams was able to get his hand in there. Disrupt what was going on. Dove on, dove on it, was able to call a timeout and got the ball back in his team's possession. And as big as Antoine Porter came up with that three-pointer earlier here in this, in this overtime period, that was a big mistake to lose the ball right there to Demetrius Williams. Could end up costing his team a championship here tonight, but still 35 seconds left in the game. The Bears down by two to the Mustangs. 65 to 63 from Kizar Pavilion. And as I look around, literally, it's hard to see one person who's, well, besides <laughs> us, who's still sitting down in this arena. Oh, man. <laughs> the crowd on their feet for the end of this one, potentially the end. We could see more overtime. 35 seconds remaining here in this first overtime period. Well, this is big here. This is big for the Mission Bears to play some pretty good, tough, hard-nosed defense here. they got to try to get the ball back. And don't let the Lincoln Mustangs run too much time off the clock. There are 29. They're going to adjust the shot clock now. 32 seconds remaining on the shot clock while there's still 35 seconds left in the game. So a three-second differential between the shot clock and the game clock. Inbounding the ball is James Gurr. Gets it to Snotty. Snotty back to Gurr. Gurr has room to work with. Goes up. Off the glass. Missed. Rebounded. Rebounded there by Anthony Bonds. Bonds gets it down to Pope. Pope dish to Porter. Porter goes in the lane, misses. And the rebound there by Pope. Pope finishes with the offensive rebound. Carrying Pope, showing up again, getting the offensive board. He's been grabbing offensive boards all night and put up a big score for his team. Antoine Porter had a great opportunity at the basket. Chest didn't go in, but Pope with great awareness to stay around the basket, grab the ball, put it in, and we are again tied here with 13 seconds left. Man. I, I don't know if my voice can last another <laughs> overtime period. The Mustangs will have a chance here with 13 seconds left on the clock to put some points on the board before the end of this overtime period and trying to end this game. The Bears still have two timeouts remaining. The Mustangs just used their last timeout. And with 13 seconds left in the game, a 65 to 65 tie here in our first overtime period. Mustangs will have possession starting on the far side of the court. And we see the entire Mission Bears team playing defense in this half of the court. I'm pretty sure this will be the game of the week. Gurr inbounds it to Demetrius Williams. Williams dribbles down court. Down the middle, drives the lane. Oh, tried a behind the back pass to Snotty. Did not work. He ends up with the ball somehow. Goes up. No foul called. Ends up with the ball again. Another shot. Nothing there. And the referees letting them play it out. And, uh, that's, how you, that's how you want to do the rest. Let them play it out. We and have three players of the Bears team hurt on the floor, but it looks like they'll be all right. There was a lot of bumping around going on there, and we are heading into the second overtime here tonight. And this looks, is crazy. And it looks like there is specifically <laughs> one Bears player on the ground clutching at his head. He is not getting up. I can't see a number on him. Looks like uh, referee signal number 24, Anthony Bonds. And if 
And if that is true, it looks like it is. He is getting up very slowly. No, excuse me, that is 22, Karrion Pope. And he gets up, and he gets an ovation from the crowd. But that is the end of the first overtime. We're going to see overtime number two tied 65 each. You don't want to see, we just wanted to see all the players stay healthy. I mean, you want all, all the key players to stay in this game. Don't want to see nobody get knocked out. Absolutely not. And, and it could just be the players getting tired. You know, they, they realize the end of the game, they're, they just played overtime. It's been a very intense game for both teams. And a, you know, just a deflating play there to end overtime for everybody. A couple players struggling to pick themselves up off the ground, giving it they're all giving it everything they've got right now. Well, it was a fight there the last few seconds of that first overtime period. The ball was going everywhere. They was just in it. The rest was letting them play. And nobody was able to get the ball up from the Lincoln Mustangs into the basket. And here we are. Demetrius Williams had a couple of chances there. Somehow ended up with the ball a couple times. Tried to throw it up and draw the foul. But the referees weren't calling anything right there. They weren't, they weren't going to be the ones to decide that point of the game. So we will play another four minutes of overtime, tied at 65 now. The players will come back out onto the court. They're tired. We're tired. <laughs> <laughs> Man, this is but, great. <laughs> uh, I wouldn't. I wouldn't trade it for anything else. This is an amazing basketball game here tonight. Once again, the CIF San Francisco Boys. Basketball championship game at Kizar Pavilion in San Francisco. I'm Sonny Bopri with Harold Mills for PlayOnSports.com. The tip off there is one, a steal by Hinson. He's not able to get a hold of it. He does. And the ball's bobbled. Eventually ends up with Demetrius Williams. Williams drives, and he'll slow things down for his team now. Gets the ball out to Telfer. Telfer back to Gurr. Gurr for Snotty on the perimeter. Snotty. The ball ends up with Hinson again. Hinson to Gurr. Mustangs moving the ball around the perimeter very well. Snotty out in three-point range. I don't know what he's doing out there. Gets the ball back to Williams. Hinson now gets it to Gurr in the corner. Gurr tries to get it to Telfer. Telfer driving, cannot finish, but there's Snotty to clean it up again. And Snotty being out in the perimeter is exactly what they want. They don't want him inside the paint, and right there he was able to get in for the offensive board and put it back. Seth, Seth Snotty, the six foot seven junior guard. Excuse me, junior center able to get in there and clean him. Another mess up for his team. Puts his point up by two. Puts his team up by two in this period. And there, I believe that was Kevin Murray finishing to tie this game up once again. That was actually Antoine Porter with an excellent up and under. And with an excellent shot to tie the game back up 6-7. My apologies to Antoine Porter. A great job for him to tie this game up again. And a hard foul as Demetrius Williams driving hard to the hoop. He is taken out there by Karrion Pope and he will shoot two. Tie game at 67. Two minutes and 48 seconds left in this second overtime period. And these players, you can see them, hands on their knees, visibly tired. Everybody just drained at this point. And Demetrius Williams will shoot two from the line. After getting fouled hard, driving to the lane, driving through the lane, right there for his Mustangs team. <laughs> and this is very important. He has to get try to make both of these shots. And you know, this is, this is the point in the game where you feel it in your arms. Definitely. And uh, free throws aren't so easy anymore. <laughs> Demetrius Williams, a chance to put his team up here in the second overtime period, and he does just that. Hits his first free throw. He's been clutch from the free throw line tonight. Yeah, he's been coming up big from the free throw for his team. A chance to put his team up by two now. And he does it. Here come the Bears driving down the other side of the court. Down by two. Two minutes and 40 seconds remaining in this second overtime period. Moving the ball around the perimeter now. Porter at the top of the arc. Gets it to Murray. Murray back to Porter. Porter to Bonds. He's defended there by Henson. Yelling in his face. Drives the baseline. Dishes. I'm not quite sure he, who he was trying to get that ball to. Ronald Maria was in the area, but the ball's knocked out of bounds. Possession will remain with the Mission Bears. Mission Bears keep the ball with 13 seconds left on the shot clock. There's Murray in the corner. Fakes the shot. 
comes up, takes a two-point shot, gets the front rim, not quite there. Rebound, knocked out of bound, out of bounds by the Bears. Possession goes to the Mustangs. That was an excellent shot Murray took, just didn't fall in, but that was a great shot and a great shot attempt. And this is that point in the game where you need your big players to step up and start making those shots. The stars have to rise. Murray has not been able to do that in either of these overtime periods so far. Demetrius Williams, one of the stars, drives the lane, goes up, and missed. It looked like it might have fallen in, but now here come the Bears. They have numbers going the other way. Porter Ooh. fouled hard by Gurr on the play, and Gurr is beside himself with that call. It looked like to me he might have got all ball there, but he kind of pulled down Porter there pretty hard there. Good call by the ref. Now Porter will shoot two to try to tie this game up. And you can hear the boo birds from the crowd. I don't, I, you know, it's hard to say that one could have gone either way. Gurr thought he would, th thought it was clean, but then I saw Porter fall awkwardly to the ground. It's really tough. It's really tough. And the referees, the referees want to let these guys play, but they, they got to do their job too. They got to make the calls when they see them. Porter hits his first free throw. That's huge. Antoine Porter has come up time and time again for his team tonight. And he does it again right there. A chance to do it again right here to tie this game up with just under two minutes remaining in this second overtime period. And he does just that. Timeout called by the Bears. Once again, we have a tie game now at 69 with one minute and 59 seconds remaining in the second overtime period. Both teams, as you can kind of tell, you can kind of tell, look in their face, you can see the fatigue coming in. The layers are getting tired, but they just got to keep fighting through it. They're getting tired. <laughs> I'm getting tired. We got to fight through it with. <laughs> <laughs> For PlayOnSports.com, I'm Sonny Wopry here with Harold, Mil Harold Mills, our producer Todd Allen, and our videographer tonight, Tim Fitzgerald bringing you action for the CIF San Francisco Boys Basketball Championship game from Kizar Pavilion. It's the Lincoln Mustangs versus the Mission Bears, and we find ourselves here in the double overtime period. This game is going to be a really exciting here at the end. We could see a wild, crazy game winning shot. A lot of different things can happen. A lot of things can happen in two minutes of a basketball game, which is what we have. One minute and 59 seconds remaining here in double overtime. Gurr will inbound, looking for Williams. Finds him. Demetrius Williams holding the ball deep in his own territory. Now he'll bring it out after faking the pass. Gets it across half court just before the half court violation. And Telfer gets it back to Gurr after he was defended from behind. Telfer now handling the ball. He's up against Ronald Murillo. Gets the ball to Williams. Gurr. Now looking for Hinson, going around the perimeter. They find the ball inside to Snotty. Snotty misses. Great defense. Great defense. Rebound there by Anthony Bonds. Gets it to Antoine Porter. And now the Bears with a chance to take the lead here. Porter drives the lane. Blocked there by Hinson. Porter again dishing. And the, he was not ready for the pass. Tried to get that ball into Anthony Bonds. And he was just not ready for the pass. And I believe maybe he stepped out of bounds while touching the ball. And uh, so that's a turnover for the Bears. Big missed opportunity there. If only Murillo uh, or uh, Bonds had been ready for that pass, he had some space to work with there. Well, it was definitely open there. He just stepped, got his, got his foot on that line there. That could have been a big play for him. I don't think he was expecting the pass. Yeah, man. he was, but you got to be ready at all times. You never know when the ball comes to you. Absolutely, and uh, as a result, Mustangs get possession and they call timeout. 119 left on the clock here in double overtime. 69-69 tie. And we've seen just about everything. <laughs> everything there is to see, we have definitely seen it here tonight. Stick around for the post-game show as we'll have numbers, we'll have scores, uh, we'll have... Uh, We'll have player scores for you. And hopefully, if these guys aren't too tired, we can get the player of the game for a post-game interview. But uh, I wouldn't blame any of these guys if they refused because they probably just want to, you know, get in the locker room, take a shower, and head home because this has been a very tough game for both teams, very physical. We've seen a lot of pain and anguish on the faces of these players. We've seen tough spills. We've seen hard fouls. We've seen everything. We've seen these players put their hearts on the line for their team. They put their bodies on the line for their team. And 
give it up to both teams from Meridale coming this game. This is an excellent game on both teams. Now inbounding is James Gurr for the Mustangs. He's going to be looking for Demetrius Williams. No, nope, he'll throw it out for Tel Telford. Telford loses the ball. Knocked out of bounds there by Anthony Bonds playing good defense. And now there's some talking going on between those two players. A little bit of good fun, a little bit of sportsmanship between those two guys. Telfer will catch the inbound pass. He'll get it to Hinson. Hinson doing a good job filling in for Mitchell Lee, who has left the game after regulation when he uh, went down with what looked like a right knee injury. Now handling the ball at the perimeter is Snotty. He gets it to Williams. Williams to Hinson. Hinson to Gurr around the perimeter. Back to Hinson. Back to Williams. One minute remaining in double overtime now. Snotty with the ball in no man's land. Gets it back to Gurr. Gurr around the perimeter. Five seconds left on the shot clock. 45 left on the game clock. Somebody has to shoot the ball. There's Telfer with a bad attempt, and they're going to call Got shot clock, clock violation. violation as he shot that three-point attempt off glass and missed the rim completely. I don't think he knew how much time was left on the clock when he had that ball with about three seconds left yeah. on the shot clock. That's why it's always important. Always, every once in a while, take a peek up there at that shot clock to know what you're working with. So a bad turnover there, and now the Bears will get the ball. It'll be Porter working the ball up the court. 40 seconds remaining here in this double overtime period. A tie game between these two teams. 25 seconds left on the shot clock for the Bears. Porter goes the opposite way of the screen. Set up by Pope. He'll take a shot off the rim. Rebounded there by Murillo. Murillo throws it up. Rebounded by Snotty. Snotty tried to get it out. An outlet pass for Williams. But instead it is intercepted there by Karrion Pope. Carry and Pope, the ball's kicked as he tries to pass it by James Gurr. And that will slow things down. Now 17 seconds left in the game. The shot clock is off. Timeout called by the Mission Bears. <laughs> 17 seconds left here in double overtime. The Bears will take possession. The shot clock is off. We are tied at 69 all in this, in this game. What's well, that going to come down to? Which team is going to be able to get come up? Which coach is going to be? Now, now coaching comes in to, to see who's going to get out coach. Who, what coach is going to out coach the other one? A play has to be drawn up to get your one of your best shooters open and to put this game to an end. You really got to think about what has worked for your team so far in this game and what hasn't. And right now, what we've seen the Bears do over and over again in clutch time at clutch times is they give the ball to either Kevin Murray or Antoine Porter and let them shoot from you know Anywhere a, somewhat of a distance uh, and as we've as we seen it sometimes shoot from some unrealistic <laughs> distances so it's, it'll be interesting to see what the uh, defensive approach is here by the, the Mustangs but additionally what the offensive approach is here by the Mission Bears see if they try to work inside, although right now they do not have the size to do that, especially with a guy like Seth Snotty on the court for the Mustangs. So Bonds will inbound it. Oh, all by himself, Murillo missed! Oh. Murillo was all by himself, but he missed. The rebound there by Telford. Telford gets it to Williams. Williams throws up a crazy shot. No foul! But they do call a foul now against Williams. I don't... Confusion all over the court. It looked like Demetrius Williams was fouled clearly going up for that shot. But that was not the case. Timeout called by the Bears once again. 8.4 seconds remaining in this double overtime period. Tied still at 69 all. Demetrius Williams driving to the hoop. What, what happened on the play? Ronald Murillo, wide open, just panicked, felt the footsteps coming from somebody behind him and just, just didn't concentrate hard enough on the goal to put it in. He was all by himself. Uh, could have been in the game possibly right there, and he just, just came up short. How does a guy like Ronald Murillo at six foot one <laughs> end up by himself? Nobody there. Nobody there. All he had to do was lay it in, and it looked like he double clutched trying to fake anybody around. And like you said, he heard footsteps and missed that pretty badly. I don't think he got rim on that. He didn't. He missed it pretty badly. He knows it. You can tell in his face. His head is down. His team is trying to pat him on the back. He knows he missed a very, very big shot, and we'll see how that affects the rest of this game. And then on the other end of the court, Demetrius Williams going up hard, threw the ball up, and uh, no foul call. I think he was trying to draw the foul, but no foul call. The ball goes out of bounds. Possession goes back to the Bears. Now they go for a deep 
Half court pass. Five seconds left. Murillo gets it in. To yeah, they call it travel. Murillo got the ball into Karrion Pope in the paint, and Pope traveled with the ball. 4.2 seconds left, and the Mustangs will have a chance to end this with a buzzer beater. This could get very, very... The roof could blow off this place, depending on what happens here on this last four seconds. No timeouts left for either team. Demetrius Williams gets it back to Gurr. One second left. He shoots a half-court shot, and it's off the glass. We're going to a third <laughs> overtime period. Snooty starting to show his frustration there. The tiredness is now definitely has settled in on these players. As you can see, the reaction by Snooty there. I think both these teams want this game to be over in their favor. But something has to happen and for a, that to, to, to go down. And a couple <laughs> of chances were there. We saw Ronald Murillo for the Bears sitting underneath the hoop all by himself. Caught the inbound pass and could not finish. And then down on the other end, uh, I, 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 I mean, to me it looked like that there was a penalty that should have been called over there, a uh, foul, but there was nothing called. And, right. you know, for, from our angle, who knows? But uh, either way, this game is going to a third overtime period. Tied at 69, we'll play another four minutes of high school basketball here on PlayOnSports.com. Madness. It's madness. <laughs> and the players... Coming back out onto the court there. <laughs> you can just see it, man. They're tired. They're, they, they've put everything they've got out there. And the respect that these players have to have for each other right now, it's, it's immense. Everybody giving it their all. We'll have another four minutes of championship basketball right here on PlayOnSports.com. Riding with you, I'm Sonny Bobri. Here with Harold Mills. Snotty has had success with the tip off all night long, and he does again there. There's a big pass. That was Demetrius Williams looking for Telford, and nothing that. there. And the travel called on Kevin Murray. Kevin Murray getting frustrated now. Traveled with the ball there, and that's a big turnover. I'm not quite sure where Williams was trying to throw that ball. It wasn't a great pass. He will inbound the ball now here with 3.53 left on the clock. Gets it to Gurr. Gurr drives up into his half of the court now. Gets it back to Williams. Around the perimeter. Gets it to Telfer. Telfer to Hinson. Hinson to Gurr again. Gurr to Hinson. Fakes the three. Gurr into Snotty. Snotty goes up and he's blocked. Again. Again. Pope. <laughs> Pope defending, <laughs> defending Snotty very well tonight. And there's an example of it right there. It's hard to believe that a guy like Snotty could get blocked, but he did. He's been blocked a couple times tonight. Now handling the ball. Antoine Porter gets it back to Kevin Murray. Kevin Murray near the half-court mark, driving up the near sideline around the perimeter. He's got Hinson on him. Drives to the free-throw line. A jumper from the free-throw line is good. Big shot there by Kevin Murray. Murray's been kind of quiet these past two overtime periods. and Thank you. Now he's starting to step it up here in this third one. Demetrius Williams now handling the ball. 2.55 left in this overtime period. Overtime number three. Williams drives, stops, gets the ball out to the perimeter to Gurr again. Gurr drives, no foul called, and now possession goes back to Anthony Bonds, to Murillo, who misses again all by himself. Ronald Murillo cannot finish, and he is feeling it right now. There's a great steal there by Anthony Bonds. He... he the Mustang player didn't know anybody was behind him. Murillo hits a shot from outside of the paint, and that's got to bring some confidence back to him. And now a Mustang player, that's James Hurt. Gurr goes down. Looks like he's cramping up. And Murillo there open again. Luckily, he had a shot of redemption there on the second attempt because he was wide open again and just completely misses the layup. He has to get his concentration going. He has to keep his mind together and make those big shots. And this is the biggest lead we've seen in any of the overtimes so far. The Bears leading the Mustangs by four points, 73 to 69. Two minutes and 20 seconds remaining here in the third overtime period. We see Demetrius Williams working the ball up quick. He's going against Murillo. Ball handling, getting into the lane, misses a layup. It was a very tough shot, and he missed it. He's on the ground clutching 
at his groin. He's on the ground, and the referee has to stop now. It looks like he could be suffering from cramps also, and this is how you can tell the fatigue is definitely, definitely setting in. He's got nothing left. He is on his back, staring at the ceiling of the Kizar Pavilion. It kind of looked like he was clutching himself there as if he'd got hit in the groin and went down. But uh, we've already seen a couple players go down with cramps so far here in this overtime laden game. Overtime laden, I think, is what I was going for there. Two minutes now remaining in this third overtime period, and the biggest lead that we've seen in any of these overtimes belongs to the Mission Bears. They lead 73 to 69. It's a four point lead, and now we see Demetrius Williams on his feet. Looks like he just has to walk it off. He's definitely feeling pain somewhere right now. It's hard to say exactly where. He's walking very strangely. But uh, the Mission Bears will now take over possession from uh, Mustang territory here. Two minutes exactly remaining in this third overtime period. And now there's just some confusion here. I'm not sure what, what the delay is. They're still, they're still wiping off the court where uh, Demetrius Williams was on the ground. That's what's happening. I don't know how many overtimes these teams can go, but I know both coaches and both teams and the fans included want to see a winner here sometime soon. And now we <laughs> see the coaches and the referees telling off another part of the court. I mean, with the amount that, that these guys have played basketball here tonight, it, there's no doubt that they've they've laid their sweat down all exactly. over this court. Referees just trying to make sure that they're not missing any obvious spots here, where uh, where a player could slip and get hurt. Once again, two minutes remaining here in this third overtime, the Mustangs find themselves down by four to the Mission Bears, who have possession. the crowd taking a moment to, to, to gather themselves and now we'll get back into play here handling the ball is Kevin Murray directing the offense gets the ball to Anthony Bonds who gets it to Pope Pope back to Porter Porter directing offense now he's got two guys on him he's got Hinson and for the first time we've seen Josh Lau on the court now there's some numbers inside and a, a nice steal there by Tyree Marzetta where it looked like the Bears were starting to have some advantageous numbers, but uh, stealing the pass was Tyree Marzetta. Now handling the ball, a three-point shot, air ball. Yeah. Barely hit glass, Marzetta with the rebound, and they're going to call jump ball. Possession arrow gives possession to the Bears. But Davion Telfer taking that three-point shot missed it badly. Missed it badly, probably could have took his time a little bit more on the shot. Almost like a desperation shot because he knows he needs, that his team needs one of those to get some momentum going for themselves. But Mission, with a minute and 20 seconds, minute and 20 seconds left here in the third overtime period, has a chance to get a, exact a little revenge here on Lincoln here in the championship game tonight. Timeout called by the Mustangs. That was their only timeout of this overtime period. The Bears still have their timeout. And like you just said, Harold, one minute and 20 seconds remaining in this third overtime period. And I'm just curious in what the Lincoln Mustangs are drawing up over there to get themselves back in this game. They have to get some points in the bucket, and they only would a two-possession game here. They have to get something going for themselves here. They've been taking a lot of ill-advised shots. And something has to give for them here. Snooty has to get Snotty has to get back into the under the rim, and he has to get more involved. The Mustangs have yet to put any points on the board in this third overtime period, while the Bears have put up four points, and that's how their lead stands right now. Once again, the CIF San Francisco Boys Basketball Championship game between the Lincoln Mustangs and the Mission Bears. I'm Sonny Bopri with Harold Mills on PlayOnSports.com. 
a deep down court pass is caught by Bonds and he is fouled. That was a football pass down the field. <laughs> that was like that was like uh, the old Dante Cal Culpepper <laughs> just throwing it up for Randy, Randy Moss, Moss. kind of days. <laughs> The foul is there committed by, uh, I, I did not see which Mustang player committed the foul, but it will result in two shots from the free throw line for Anthony Barnes. And Barnes gets his first one to fall. It looked like it was about to rim out, sat on top of the rim for a moment and spun in, and that gives the Bears a five point lead. Bonds with a chance to make this a six point game right here. 118 left in the third overtime. And that one's off the front of the rim, rebounded there by Tef Telfer. Telfer gets it to Henson. Henson back for Gurr, back to Henson. Henson for three, off the end of the rim, and that's a big miss. Now, one minute and five seconds remaining, and a hard foul there by Telfer, it looks like. Telfer fouled Bonds on the play. They both take a while to get up. That could just be more fatigue than injury right there. Although Bonds does come out limping. He cannot, uh, came out limping just a little bit on that left leg. One minute and two seconds now and the Bears can start to pull away here in this third overtime period. Bonds will shoot two from the free throw line. He was one of two just moments ago. Bonds airmails the first free throw attempt, and he is in pain, shaking his head, saying, no, 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 that's not okay. Yeah, that's that tiredness set in. He, he looked like he barely had enough strength to even get it that far. It could, it, it could be how tired he is. It could be that he is feeling some pain on that left leg, which we saw him limping around on just moments ago but shaking his head in disbelief that he airmailed that one. And his second one is no good. He missed them both. And the fight for the rebound goes out of bounds. Possession goes to the Bears. They say that Telfer knocked it out of bounds. Davion Telfer trying to make a play for his team. Cannot do it right there. And now we have, it didn't look like any time came off the clock. The clock still says a minute and two seconds, which I believe is <laughs> where we were before that free throw attempt. Lincoln still has not put up any any points here in this third overtime. Looks like the clock manager is mesmerized with this game as much as everybody in the crowd is. And there's Murillo with another nice opportunity, but he's fouled on the play. They're going to call that one on Demetrius Williams for the push while Murillo was in the middle of the was in midair trying to trying to bank that one home. And oh, a correction! They're going to call that one on number 21, Randy Hinson. Well, depending on how these two free throws go, this could be the nail in the coffin for the Lincoln Mustangs here at the Michigan Bears. So now Ronald Murillo, who we've seen miss a couple of vital shots in this game. And now Coach Matt Jackson of the Mustangs calling his team over, saying, look, you've only got a minute and one second to find your way back into this game. I, but." I, I don't believe he had a timeout left. I don't know why the referees are allowing this conference here. It's a substitution is what's happening. So for the first time in this game, we will see number 24, Therese Blaylock, come in for the Mustangs. A pair of fresh legs. And Randy Hinson is the player that comes off the court. Yeah, very good point. Fresh legs for uh, Therese Blaylock. Ronald Murillo now shooting two free throws. His first one is up, and it is good. Gives his team a six-point lead with one minute and one second remaining in triple overtime. Murillo misses his second. Rebounded there by Telford. Now the Mustangs have to move a little bit quick. They need two three-pointers or they just need quick points. Demetrius Williams drives down the near sideline. Three-point shot for Blaylock. And he airmailed it. And there's the rebound, batted around a little bit. Eventually ends up in the hands of Pope. No, Murillo, Murillo goes up and he's fouled again. And now he's on the ground, <clears throat> excuse me, face down. Getting up very slowly. Man, Ronald. These players, these players are just tired. They're taking a lot of hard hits and 
They're just tired, you can tell it. And, and, and he especially has had to fight through some mental blocks in this game. He missed a couple of big opportunities in regulation and in the first overtime, but has shown up big here in this third overtime. Misses that free throw there. A chance to put his team up by three possessions with a free throw here. 60, uh, 75 to 69, 38.8 seconds remaining in the game. The Mission Bears with a six point lead and that's all it will remain as Murillo misses both free throws. Rebound there by Snotty. Snotty gets it to Telfer. Telfer. They don't have time to dribble, up. they gotta put it up. Williams, they cannot be doing this. Gets the ball into Blaylock. Blaylock banks it in for his points of the, for his first points of the game. 24 seconds now and the Mustangs have to foul and that's exactly what they do. Demetrius Williams fouls Antoine Porter and that will result in two shots. Free throws for Porter. It is now a four point game with 22.3 seconds remaining and the Mustangs, I feel like they let too much time burn off the clock there. Yeah, you can when, it, when, when, it, when the game is down on the line, you don't have time to you know, dribble. You gotta find a player, play, your best shooter has to just put it up and hope that they make the best out of it. And we can see the effects of the fatigue of this game on these players right now as Porter misses a free throw there. He hits the second one though, it's a five point game now. Mustangs have to move quick here. Blaylock gets the ball back into T uh, Telford. Telford now, drives the lane, he'll take it for two, he'll miss. Rebound there, shot, and that might end the game. Here's Ronald Murillo, another chance, and he converts this time. Five seconds and that'll be it. One more shot for the Mustangs. Demetrius Williams air balls another one, and that's it folks. The Mission Bears have defeated the Lincoln Mustangs in triple overtime by a score of 78 to 71 here at Kizar Pavilion in San Francisco. And they are your CIF San Francisco bat boys basketball champions. What a game, what a game. That was an exciting, very exciting game. Lincoln came in as favorites in this game compared to what's happened to the, to the last game. And Mission came in here wanting to tell a different story tonight fought and they fought their hearts out uh, got every rebound a lot of offensive boards defensive boards big big time players for them and I think the difference in the game for mission this time around was the defensive play by Anthony Bonds and carry on Pope and the performance they put on Seth Snooty and you just see the despair on the faces of these Mustang players as they they as, as they all shake hands with the opposing team and this has got to be one of the hardest parts of the game for the losing team, especially in a triple overtime matchup. But you know what? you got to give both of these teams credit. Every single player who stepped onto that court tonight did everything they could for their team. And in the end, it was just, uh, it was, it was just the Bears who were able to last a little bit longer. Yeah. And Mission was able to come out on top this time. Did a little, couple little things different they did last. And, man, a great game here. Can't take nothing away from either team. Uh, Lincoln hold their heads, should hold their heads. Somebody had a great season. Uh, played a great game tonight, just didn't come out on top. And with that, we're going to pause for a moment here on PlayOnSports.com and uh, see if we'll get the opportunity to get an interview with one of the players of the game who we deem that to be. But... Either way, we're going to take a short break here on PlayOnSports.com. We'll be back to wrap things up here on your destination for high school sports, PlayOnSports.com.
And welcome back to PlayOnSports.com, our coverage of the CIF San Francisco Boys Basketball Championship game, which went three overtimes tonight between the Lincoln Mustangs and the Mission Bears. In the end, the Mission Bears able to pull away in the third overtime and win by a score of 78 to 71. And uh, we saw a little bit of everything in this, in this game, Harold. What if, if we were to pick a player of the game? We're out, uh, unfortunately we're not going to be able to get an interview with any of our players because of the intensity of the game uh, and how late it is right now. But they, are, you can see on your uh, on, on the screen, they are giving out the awards for the championship game now. But uh, Harold, what was the biggest key in triple overtime that ended up with the uh, Mission Bears getting the victory here? A very hard-fought victory tonight. Well. Well, uh, Antoine Porter and Kevin Murray are both could be, you know, up for the play of the game. But the difference to me tonight was the defense that was played on Seth Snooty. Seth Snooty uh, was was not his usual self tonight. Um, the last game they played against Lincoln, he dominated in in the paint on the boards, and he didn't do that tonight. So big ups to Anthony Bonds and carry on Pope on the defense they played tonight. That was a big, big factor tonight. Absolutely. The combination of Pope and Bonds didn't exactly shut down Snotty, but it definitely slowed him down to the point where it gave the Bears an opportunity to take this game to triple overtime and win it in triple overtime. In, in triple overtime, we didn't really see much from Seth Snotty, the six foot seven junior center for the uh, Mustangs. But, uh, and a lot of that could have been fatigue, but, you know, that's not an excuse. Every player on the court was feeling that fatigue at that point. Well, yeah, every, everybody was tired, and and the, the stars rise. And, the, and, the, and basically, the team who wanted more won tonight. When you got when you go into long games like that, the ones who wanted more show up, show it, and that's what we're going to show tonight. In the end, we couldn't have asked for a better basketball game here tonight from Kizar Pavilion in San Francisco. Your CIF San Francisco Boys Basketball Champions are the Mission Bears, defeating the Lincoln Mustangs by a score of 78-71 to 71 in triple overtime. Thank you for tuning in to Play On Sports tonight. For the entire crew, we have Todd Allen as our producer, Tim Fitzgerald as our videographer, myself, Sonny Boparai, and our analyst tonight, Harold Mills. Thank you for tuning in tonight. We'll see you again for more high school action here on your destination for high school sports, playonsports.com.